All right, I want to talk to you today a little bit about building cheap motors. And this is something I, I kind of enjoy doing. I, I, I've always had, got a kick out of building engines, uh, getting them apart and looking on the insides and putting stuff together. And, uh, you know, I, I bought this engine, you know, the other day for 150 bucks. And, uh, the kid had bought it to put it in his truck and his truck ended up being a mess and he had the motor half disassembled and left it out in the rain. And so he gave up on it and figured the motor was trash. Um, I popped the oil pan off of it to check to see if it had four bolt mains, which it doesn't, but there was all kinds of oil in the bottom end of the motor. So yeah, there was plenty of water, but he never cleaned anything. And that's actually, a, if you're dealing in old motors that have been laying around, if, that, if the parts weren't cleaned, they tend to hold up better. So if, you, if you're buying engines and you're you know, working on stuff and you're going to let it sit for a while, don't clean it until you're ready to build it. Just a little tip there. The oil that's on it will help preserve it. So anyways, I start getting into this, this motor and I realize it's a boat motor and it doesn't have a whole lot of hours on it. And so I, I kind of want to go over how to assess an engine and, and what to look for and what's critical and what's not whenever you're building a cheap engine. Now, if I were building engines to sell them professionally, uh, there's I would probably go think about things differently. But having done plenty of 24 hours of lemons races, I've seen what kind of junk holds together really well. It doesn't take much to put together a good running motor. So um, I've got the, the crankshaft pretty much undone. I've got this just kind of cinched down just to hold the crankshaft in place. But these bearings aren't terribly loose, but it, it, it turns smooth. The crank's straight. You know, there's no binding. It just turns smooth. Um, there's a little bit of this pitting here. I can't even feel that. I would have no problem putting an engine together with that on it, unless I was selling it. If I was selling an engine, I would, you know, I'd get some emery cloth and a cargo strap and just work this, put some oil on here and work the emery cloth on this and th that clean up. Just don't do it so much that you end up uh, shaving off bearing clearance. Um, the bearings, here's the number one main cap. The bearings aren't bad. They're not pristine. Uh, my son and I pulled apart the engine in his Crown Vic a couple months back and you could still see the machine work in the bearings. His car got a brand new engine before it was retired from the police force. Crazy. So anyways, we ended up putting it back together with the, the stock bearings. This here, there's no copper showing. The bearing seems to be thick enough. Whenever I put this engine together, I'm going to plastic gauge these bearings. I'm going to put it back together with this cap on it. Um, I may not even clean these up. I may just you know wipe them down and uh, if I feel froggy, I might put some emery cloth on them to get rid of some of this pitting, but that's not gonna, that's not gonna destroy the crank. It's not gonna cause your engine to blow. Um, hang on a second. The bores do not look pristine. Let's see if I can get some good lighting in here. There, you can see some of the, the rust marks. But, running my finger over this, I can't even feel this rust. It's, it's there, but I can't feel it. If I hone that, that's gonna clean up. And I have no problem honing these cylinders, doing nothing more than that, and uh, putting the pistons back in. Speaking of, I've got one of the pistons here. You can still see the machine work on the skirts. The rings look good. Uh, I, took, I put these in the solvent tank for about an, a couple hours and pulled them out and just hit them with a wire brush. A hand brush, not a power brush. And these look good. The rod bearings are just barely broken in. This motor didn't have but a couple hundred hours on it, I don't think. Um, I will say, you know, it's got the provisions for a roller cam and it has a flat tappet cam. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a roller cam in this. And that's the only thing I'm gonna change when I put it back together. Um, I'm gonna reuse the same bearings. And it will run. Uh, the cylinder heads, I've got to clean them up still. They they look they look rough. Um, they need some cleaning. I'll take them whenever I take the block to the machine shop. I'll take these as well and have the machinist uh, magnaflux them, make sure there's no cracks. But the valves all look good. Uh, there's some there's some rust going on that needs to be cleaned up. And but the the springs all that looks good. I'll take them apart, I'll clean them up, I'll do a mild port job and put them back together, and I won't have a problem doing that. There's some people I know that would take an engine like this that they score for 150 bucks, and they would throw everything away. They bore it 30 over, 
Uh, they, you know, they might reuse the crank and the block and, you know, maybe the heads, but they would, you know, they would put new valves in it. They'd want to do a valve job. They'd want to do all kinds of stuff. It doesn't take that much to build a good running engine cheap. I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars on this. When I'm, when all said and done, when I rebuild the heads and I end up putting all the stock crank and, and rods and, and pistons and bearings. If once I put it all back in, I've got a I've got mix and match gasket set pieces that I can put the the the, the this together with just leftover gaskets, and I don't have to spend anything on gaskets. If I have five hundred dollars in this engine, I'll probably have five hundred dollars. The camshaft and the uh, you know I'll, I'll have to go to, to pull apart and get the the rubber cam stuff, and the camshaft's going to run me about three hundred dollars. So altogether, I might have five hundred dollars in this when I get it back together. You know, machine work's going to run me $150, $200, you know, and, and that's, you know, just cleaning up the, the block, basically. I'm not going to have any, I'm not going to have them bore it. I'm going to have them vat it, magnaflux it, inspect it, block and heads. So, yeah, it's, it, you can do this cheap and have a good running engine. With a, with a camshaft and those heads there cleaned up, this ought to be a 300 horsepower. This was a 300, and, I think, 320 horsepower motor with the cam that was in it. I should probably be, be around 350. I'm not going to pump it up crazy, but you know I'm definitely going to go for a little bit more with it. Um, and I'm going to ditch that heavy cast iron manifold it had also, and put an aluminum manifold on it. That that might get me up over five 500 ways. But uh, yeah, don't be afraid to do it yourself. Don't be afraid to reuse good parts.